So hello into the Olympic Village. It's great to be connected this way with you. And uh, we're gonna have a very dear person today talking to you, uh, silver Olympic medalist from Tokyo, Nicola McDermott. I don't want to say too much right now. We just go into the worship, but before that, uh, let me pray. So dear father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to be connected in heart and with you. And uh, really, I ask you to come with your love into this Olympic village. We know that there is, uh, yeah, darkness is the absence of light. And Lord, I thank you that your light comes into every heart, that you give hope that this will be an amazing, amazing time in Jesus name. Amen. You will find the lyrics in the chat if you want to sing along and otherwise you can just listen to Simon. Father, I'm after your heart Father, I'm seeking your face You are all that I long for Would you come through Wow, 
was so beautiful. Thank you so much. Really, I appreciate that. And it's really after his heart. It's so powerful. And, uh, you know, when, when, when we experience this love, if we, if we really sense that and have this peace, and the Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear, really in his presence there is no worries no anxiety no, nothing that's holding you back and we all know how important that is right now for you in the olympic village before your competition that you can lay down every burden everything uh, that would hinder you to to perform best and to enjoy actually to enjoy it before the competition during the competition and afterwards and now it's uh, my great pleasure to introduce to you someone who is living that, uh, who lived it at the Olympics in Tokyo in an amazing way. Uh, she made it not just in the finals, she made the silver medal in high jump and uh, in a way that is, was really, she was shining. She was shining, her smile was uh, and is something uh, you see it's, it's really the, the love of God is just shining out of her. So please welcome with me our dear Nicola live today from Australia. Woo! Oh, thank you so much, Jörg, and for everyone that is on the call or even on the recording today. Um, I can completely understand just the, um, the amount of demands that's on on you at the moment with the Olympics uh, all around. So for you to take time out today and to hear and to just um, receive something is beautiful. And that really speaks of your character. So well done. Um, but today I was just feeling on my heart to talk about the character of God. And when you know who your God is, it doesn't matter your circumstance, it doesn't matter your feelings. It doesn't matter even um, what the world would compare you to. When you know him, then you're able to know who you are and achieve things that probably you could never even imagine on for yourself. To give a little bit of context with the to Tokyo Olympics to me, I was um, at the pool yesterday in a random location in Australia and I don't usually go for swims in the pool. I'm not, I'm not a pool athlete. But as I walked over there, somebody, um, he was an old man, and he came up to me and he said, oh, Nicola McDermott, I know you. Um, congratulations in the Tokyo Olympics. And I said, oh, you know, thank you very much. And um, he said, I'm a bus driver. And the whole, everywhere on the bus, we watched you that night. And we've been following your schedule ever since. We have it printed out. And in the bus station, each one of us talk about you. And when you competed that night, none of us could fall asleep because we were so excited. There was a passion. There was, um, we haven't stopped talking about you. And now I see you. And that was months and months later. And I just think, wow, there is, there was a flow on effect of that one moment that God allowed me to experience has impacted not only certain people that watched it, but workplaces, communities. Every one of those bus drivers um, heard the gospel preach the night of, of my Olympic final. And they had conversations and people that come to my church who worked at the buses were able to tell them about Jesus. There's always a flow on effect from when you do the will of God. He does something incredible that's still changing generations. It's still changing things. And so I think about something as small as a bus driver telling me what's happened from that. And I've seen my nation really shaped by it. I want to encourage you in this season that it is such an honor, but when you do even the smallest decision and you decide to do it with God, expect eternal um, fruit from it, even if you don't see it. And I think um, when it comes to uh, the Winter Olympics, I personally was never on the ski slopes. So I can only visualize and imagine what you have to go through, but I can, um, com I can completely understand that there is still pressure. And to, in order to thrive under pressure, it's reminding yourself of 
the power of what who's in, like who's carrying you what's inside of you so even physically um we can we can be we can do maybe this much in the physical if you're comparing yourself to your competitors but when you recognize that the spiritual is inside of you god takes even the smallest things from your hands and expands it we look at jesus in the bible when he was um, taking the bread and fish in his hands. He had five loaves of bread and two fish, but when he blessed it and he gave it up and gave thanks and then broke it out, there was 17 basketfuls left over, 12 basketfuls. He did it multiple times, so I can't remember the exact ones, but he just took something that was quite natural. It wasn't substantial and made it into a miracle. And how much more is he going to do that with our lives when we just give it to him and say, and with thanks, understanding that we are blessed, we have the favor of God and we give ourselves to him, how much greater will he have? Because Jesus didn't just feed a, a full group of people that were following him that day. He, he did something that would change generations because they would talk about that day when Jesus did miracles with food. They can't ever have a meal without thinking back to that. Just like there's little things that you'll do in your life that when you give it over to God, it will change people's lives for the rest of their life and even the generations that come after them. Anyway, so I've opened up to um, quite a famous verse and it's in Isaiah chapter 40. And I want to read it out to you. And it starts in verse 28 that I'm going to read from. It says, have you not known and have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not grow faint. What I love in this passage of scripture is like, have you not known, have you not heard, God is an everlasting God. If you have ever experienced God himself and the power of God, remember that wasn't just a one time only so that you would start following him and believing in him. God is an everlasting God. His character does not change. He was with you in the moment that you met him. Or maybe if you've never met him, this is a great opportunity for you to encounter the true, living, everlasting God. He hasn't changed. He's the creator of the ends of the earth. Whether you're in Beijing, Russia, America, Australia, he is the creator of it all. He knows the beginning and the end. And he has not changed. He doesn't grow faint and doesn't grow weary. When I recognize that being in a place where it can be high pressure, when I recognize that my God does not grow weary, he does not grow faint, he doesn't get tired of providing for me, he doesn't get overwhelmed, he is steadfast, he is true. When I realize and look at Jesus, that no matter what he did, whether he was speaking to crowds or, or um, praying in silence, when he was in the temple telling people of the greatness and majesty of God, or was next to a woman by a well telling her and redeeming her. When I look at all of that, and I think that his character and his peace is immovable and he didn't grow faint at that, know that that same power, the same God, lives inside of you when you choose to follow him. The Holy Spirit that is inside of you has so much power. It has so much greater capacity. Yes, the physical is this much, and you might be looking at the 
competitions around you with eager expectations going, yes, I can perform and I can do all of these things, but no, even greater than your performance, you simply being in that village, God will do the impossible through you because the supernatural Holy Spirit isn't just, um, isn't just fitting into a box of sporting performance. He can also do breakthrough in relationships, so in friendships, in with when it comes to your country, uh, the people, the officials around you, the competitors around you. Know that God isn't just a dimensional God. He impacts everything. I can just really believe that there will be breakthrough in even in this Olympics time where he might even show you things about yourself completely unrelated to sport but bring breakthrough because when you invite God into your life in a way that's of greater capacity, you'll start seeing breakthrough in every area. I know with my time in the Olympic Village, I had a lot of time by myself. And when I was there, I decided just to spend that time with God. It was really tempting just to go onto my phone with social media. And I found I was doing that more and more onto the lead up the Olympics. So I stopped social media altogether. I just put that distraction away from me. It was the best thing ever. I can recommend that in life. If it just gets busy, just get rid of the, the media just for the moment. But when I did that, I would just spend time with God and I would just think about him and talk to him about what was going on with my life. And he put breakthrough in my heart. And as he did breakthrough in my heart, I... I found I, I was so much more peaceful. I had a, such a close relationship with him that I knew who I was. And I, I knew that every time I walked out of my room, they would, they would experience the presence of God because I was carrying him. I realized that almost like the Olympic flame, I was, I was simply a torch. And I said, Holy Spirit, I pray for your fire in me that I can burn the brightest that even wearing a mask and wearing all of the Australia clothes, they would see the representation of the kingdom of God. And I'm believing that for you. I really am, because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll be able to do things so incredible and dream even bigger, bigger beyond gold, right? Beyond the gold medal. Imagine every person turning on a television set or every team member, when they walk in, they experience the love of Jesus inside of you. Imagine these dreams, right, of people turning on the TV from wherever in the world and simply you speaking in such grace and passion and love that people go, I don't know what that is, but I want it. <laughs> and they find that it's not an, like a that, it's a person and it's Jesus. I encourage you in that time, time spent with God is never time wasted. This season, regardless of performance, when you invite God into that moment, you become so much more than just a moment. You become so much more than an athlete that did their job on the day. You become an ambassador of heaven, an ambassador of the kingdom that changes nations and allows people to pursue after their dreams or pursue after the identity of God because you've carried him and you've carried him well. Now, I just want to finish with Romans chapter 8, verse 27 and 28. And it says this, and he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, God can intercede and make ways and make paths within the snow-covered Alps that you could never imagine. He'll lead you to people and he'll direct a path, even the meal plans, like, you know, like the timetables, PCR tests, when you realize that God is into. Um, interceding and making ways and um, connecting you to people even if you miss a bus just know that all things work for the good of those who love God so someone who's on that next bus you get to carry the light of Jesus to them when you go into the I don't know when, when you go into the training and you have to wait an extra hour you just spend that time in prayer and God might bring someone in that moment or he might reveal himself to you for an encounter in that moment who knows when you can have that realization of who God is and who you are, 
then the Olympic Village becomes like a, a toy store. It just becomes fun. Um, and I just know that in your competition, after your competition, and everything else in between, God can really make this experience one that will change you. And when you are changed, nations are changed because you were not representing even more than your state, continent or country. You're representing him and he is so well pleased with you. So keep going. Know that your strength and courage and bravery will not be in vain and spend time with him because it is always worth it. Wow, thank you so much, Nicola. This it really it is about this relationship and I think so many don't know that yet and uh, it's so beautiful you, you can really see it in your life and in so many others and this is uh, such an adventure uh, and it takes it you get a different perspective in in everything you do uh, and uh, yeah I loved it so let me ask and in, introduce for those who don't know uh, quickly also my wife Uh, she herself was an Olympic finalist in a summer sports in, uh, in springboard diving, competed at the Sydney Olympics in the finals. And uh, let me ask you, uh, Jacqueline, how you experienced and just highlight one short thing uh, for us out of what uh, Nicola shared with us. Yeah, every word touched me so deeply that I almost want to go back in competition. I'm so inspired when I heard you, Nicola, and what touched me most was who is carrying you. So the character of God, his goodness, his love. And I experienced that too. And you were saying um, when you have done all in the physical, like what God did with his, uh, two bread and um, five loaves of um, the fishes and the bread and how he multiplied it, how then 17 baskets were full of bread and fishes. And that's God's character. I gave everything to him too. And it was not, not natural that I will do so well, but God did just, he is a God of miracle. And I know when you're there, you're, when you completely trust God and he can do miracle above and beyond. And yeah, Thank you so much for your amazing work, Nicola. Really, so good. <laughs> Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, great. And uh, let me just add uh, for those of you who may be listening also the first time um, from the Bible, what I read this morning, you probably know the story when Jesus was uh, before the, on the evening before he went on to, onto the cross and uh, he was un under such pressure. Uh, and even was, was disappointed because, you know, one of those people that he's are so dear to him will betray him, uh, Judas, as you know the story. And it was even before another one dear of him, he would know he disowned him, denial, Peter, that he said, I don't know you. But under this pressure, Jesus said, yet not as I will, but as you will. He said that to the Father. And uh, we read here, he paid for all sin by being separated from God. The sinless son of God took our sins up in himself to save us from suffering and separation. And I thought it was so interesting that he's also the separation he took on him, that we don't have to be separated anymore from God, that he can be with us, that we can be together in the competition before and, uh, and after. And what does it take to be able to say as you, as you will? It takes firm trust in God's plans. It takes prayer and obedience each step of the way. And we go in another worship where you, song you can reflect on what you've heard. And that's what I'm praying for you, that you can trust him, but you, you can only trust someone that you know. And uh, this is the invitation for you to open your, as you open the door of your room, to open your heart for him. And we're going to listen and say already goodbye. We are looking forward to see you on Wednesday. We have an amazing uh, guest speaker on Wednesday and um, wish you all the best now for this today and the coming days and see you soon. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Nicola, for sharing. And uh, Simon, thank you for leading us into another song. That rides from
from man to touch your heart and glorify your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name. Sing it louder. It's nothing has the power to say but your name. Jesus, in your name we pray. Come and fill our hearts today. Lord, give us strength to live for you and glorify your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name. Shelter like the water, your name. Let the nations sing louder. It's nothing has the power to say, but your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like. Sing loud, it's nothing that's the power to say, but your name.